Thank you, Bart, very much for this kind uh, introduction. It's a pleasure and honor to be able to speak here and introduce to you some of the aspects of uh, water governance in, in Austria. Um, as already said, this is a, a joint presentation uh, from the Ministry and uh, the Government of Carinthia. Uh, I'm working as an expert, uh, outside expert, uh, on this uh, project for the last two years. And um, I was also asked to introduce you into the Drava region from an international perspective. So you can see that um, uh, we start at a high altitude of some 1,240 meters uh, with the source of the Drava in the Dolomite Mountains in South Italy. And we go through the uh, mountain areas of uh, Slovenia uh, and, and uh, then into the plain of uh, Croatia and Hungary in the Pannonian plain. And you can see uh, the miracles that uh, the river has formed there in the landscape and uh, that are also posing some challenges to the political borderline. And ending then uh, is the river in uh, at the uh, Danube in the famous Kopatsky Reed, uh, so-called Amazonas of Europe. Uh, and on this road, of course, it's, uh, in, uh, a it's subject to a number of uh, interesting discussions, conflicts, and uh, sometimes even resolutions. The Drava Basin as a, as a whole has some 40,000 square kilometers. It's shared by five countries. And you see that this is a, a bit unevenly shared. Um, we have uh, Austria taking the largest part, more than half, and then uh, Slovenia, Croatia, and Hungary having a similar smaller share. The, the length of the river of 711 kilometers is actually the result of a new calculation that we did in the uh, course of our project, because in the literature you find some lengths of some 740 or 50 kilometers. And you see also that uh, here, um, the lengths are uh, unevenly distributed, of course, a very short section in, in Italy, and then longer sections in the other countries. We have a lot of shared borders, and that is also then uh, the, the reason why we have uh, altogether five bilateral commissions dealing with the uh, various aspects of water management. They were set up already some time ago, and have, uh, um, uh, of course, then the ad agenda as it was designed uh, that time ago. The character of the river is, uh, to a large extent, natural and impacted by hydropower. These are the two main features. Um, the uh, result is that the lower part is actually very intact. And, uh, but it is subject of the effects that are caused in the middle and upper reaches, which is, for instance, the retaining of uh, sediments. Uh, and the result is then uh, riverbed erosion, even in that part that is not really much developed. And the reason is that this is the former Iron Curtain borderline, which basically uh, the military has protected over many decades. And um, in the this difference also refers to the largest tributary, which is the Mura River in Austria, which you also got to know a little bit yesterday in the uh, prize-winning ceremony. Um, so the main subject is uh, hydropower, and we have altogether 24 dams with uh, different dimensions, of course, in the various parts of the, ba uh, of the uh, along the river. We have also the subject of fish passes. There exist a number of fish passes, but actually very few of them are somehow functional. Um, but we are now in a, in a new period where uh, longitudinal connectivity is a very big topic, and we have some very big new ones under construction or recently opened as the one that you can see on the right-hand side. Uh, within Austria, the, the Drava is part of uh, the Danube Basin, and uh, the Danube Basin is actually dominating Austria with a share of some 96% of the whole country. Uh, the other two small uh, parts uh, from Austria belong to the Elbe and the Rhine catchments, and the uh, Drava is the southernmost uh, subcatchment of, of Austria. Um, the, uh, Risk analysis um, in 2004 has shown that actually some 60% of 
all rivers in, in Austria, or more than 60%, are under hydromorphological alteration. And that varies, of course, uh, among the uh, different rivers. But you can see here the example of the Upper Drava uh, riverbank um, in that area, which is not impounded, so not directly impacted by uh, a lateral uh, a cross barrier of a dam or weir. Water governance or river governance in, in Austria is a shared task, shared between the federal level, which is the Ministry of Agriculture, Forestry, Environment and Water Management, which is responsible for the water management implementation of WFD and uh, implementation of the flood directive. The nine lenders, the federal states or provinces uh, or regions, um, are with their governments uh, also executing water management and flood defense, but on behalf of the ministry. So this is a, a special arrangement, whereas nature conservation and spatial planning are uh, directly subjects and tasks of the lender, so they have their own laws, with the result in, that in this small country we even have nine different laws on those aspects, which makes, of course, then river management not an easy task. We have the national law, the Water Act, uh, with the uh, ecological water quality objectives, the water management plan, which is a national plan because it comprises uh, the entire country, so 96% is the Danube and then the, the other two uh, uh, catchments. And uh, their uh, uh, river restoration is, of course, uh, of uh, uh, a big prominence, and that refers also to a prioritization, which refers to larger rivers. So in these larger rivers, which is larger than 100 square kilometers, um, there is uh, the priority for restoration, especially for the medium distance migrators, that's the, the Danube salmon, the barbel, and the nasa, um, such as, for instance, on, on the Drava, and the top priority is the restoration of the river continuity by 2015. Um, my colleague, Kola Greimel, has uh, given a presentation just uh, two hours ago, where she reported that uh, out of uh, uh, 1,000 uh, that 1,000 barriers are being removed uh, in the country, and uh, in 200 cases, also the discharge has been improved um, for the ecological flow uh, to improve the habitat situation. Habitat improvement, as such, is to be started, but that's more on a voluntary basis. That is not a legally required act action, but uh, there are uh, negotiations and and and. Uh, efforts going on in a positive trend. Otherwise, uh, studies are being done on mitigating hydropeaking and improving um, the sediment balance, which is uh, having, of course, uh, a number of deficits due to the many barriers that exist in the catchment. Um, the flood management is, is a parallel action that is integrated. It also has the non-deterioration principle um, uh, or aim, and uh, the natural water retention measures are, of course, very important and prominent. And that leads us then also to the financing aspect, where we have um, two funds available for improving the ecology of rivers, which means the, the fish passes, the habitat restoration, and you see here the figure that was invested, as well as uh, the flood management fund, which also provides uh, uh, opportunities for co-funding um, to a large extent, 85% of, of measures, apart from, of course, the EU funds uh, for the large projects that are also available and that are being used in an intensive way. Very important since the 1990s is public awareness raising in order to secure uh, um, acceptance and support. Um, so they were done not just by the ministry or the, gov the provincial governments, but usually together with other stakeholders, notably NGOs. And uh, these campaigns proved to be really effective in improving uh, the, the public attention and support. Now coming to the Drava in Austria, it has a catchment of uh, 10,000 square kilometers, uh, a length you see of uh, 260 kilometers that is shared by two uh, of the lender, the, the, the provinces. And we have here the, the issue of 10 power plants in the lower part of the Austrian Drava. And uh, whereas the, the other upper part is still relatively intact uh, in, and uh, not impounded. Um, but uh, flood management is one of the top issues uh, that uh, are 
to be handled for a long time, okay, uh, of course, and that are still a subject of today and tomorrow. You see other key management issues that uh, have been identified in the discussion of the Sea River project and that are the key tasks also in the future management in Austria and across the border. To give you some visual impression of the river, this is from the upper uh, Austrian Drava, and you see that this is a largely a regulated uh, alpine river where uh, uh, the, the banks have been uh, uh, fixed uh, to a large extent, but where you still find a lot of uh, valuable species, whereas at the lower end of the upper Drava you have the first hydro dams. Um, land use is very important in the Alpine regions. We heard that uh, on Monday that in the Alpine region the pressure is very, very big, and that's also the case here. But we have also a traditional use of the riverine landscape and uh, a modern use in terms of tourism, but also recreation. People are getting more and more back to the river and are interested also in new infrastructure uh, like cycling paths um, to uh, explore and enjoy the river, apart from really driving on the river in canoes and uh, other uh, boats. Um, flood management uh, was uh, changed in the 1960s after the two big floods with the result that uh, the regulation was actually uh, intensified and uh, still uh, maintaining some retention areas, but uh, increasing the effect of uh, bad incision. And uh, that is for the upper part of the Austrian Drava and in terms of the lower Austrian Drava, we, I said that there's a series of dams and big, large impoundments, actually lake-like uh, areas, which are serving uh, for tourism. And at the very end uh, uh, of, of the Austrian Drava, then we have uh, um, the, tra the, the border with, with uh, Slovenia, where we had a, a very big flood incident in 2012 that actually had then a much larger impact onto the Slovenian side. And that's the reason why uh, this cross-border um, uh, cooperation and uh, the uh, commissions are very, very important. Um, I mentioned the, the, the power plants. We have the, 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 the run of the motor river power plants, uh, as well as in the upper part, then storage power plants. And they are, of course, then uh, causing uh, relevant impacts already at the local site. You see here the difference in the, in the variation of the discharge here on the right-hand side in that uh, uh, figure of uh, daily fluctuations. And you see the outlet of this uh, power plant into the upper Drava, uh, ecologically very valuable area, Natura 2000 site, Ramsar site. But it's, it's impacted by the daily fluctuations and the different water quality um, that uh, is having an effect on the, the fish. And that is a subject, of course, also of the uh, restoration efforts. What we are experiencing in Austria is a transfer from the, revolution, from the regulation phase via restoration measures towards integrated management. On the, and on the right-hand side, you see such an example where you have various land uses uh, organized next to each other and trying to still uh, maintain their interests uh, without compromising everything. And you see that river restoration is now one of the top players in this region. Uh, this was started already in the 1990s uh, with uh, um, the first uh, restoration works and continued then in two EU life projects um, with the result that uh, until today we have in the upper Austrian section, which is nearly 70 kilometers long, 43% uh, already being restored. And this was the subject now of the Sea River project where an evaluation of the 20 years of river restoration was done. In a very detailed version, there were then a lot of discussions among the experts about the findings, comparing the expectations and uh, the targets with the results achieved. And this was also discussed and reflected with the local stakeholders in a series of workshops with a wider scope, not uh, just looking at the nature or water management aspects, but also flood management, of course, sediment aspects, um, and uh, then the interests and views and needs of the local stakeholders. This has resulted in a revised light built vision, prioritization of, and a new program of measures. 
An example, um, just to illustrate what, ha what has ha actually happened in the landscape, you see the problems and the objectives uh, as a result of the bad regulation that we have uh, uh, problems uh, for the water management but also for the flood protection. And you see here one area in, in a comparison between the situation before and after uh, the intervention. So it's a widening of the regulated riverbed and expansion of, uh, the, into the former river landscape. And uh, the works which were actually completed in 2011, and you see on the right hand side again, the situation during construction, had then be to be uh, improved, let's say, um, in, in 2014, because the river with its dynamics was actually much more active than expected. And um, there was then the, the, the problem of other land users who said, okay, but that's our limit. And please make sure that the river is not running over our fields. But in conclusion of these uh, interventions, you have a number of benefits that are resulting. Uh, so a number of stakeholders who are benefiting from this um, uh, restoration works and the measures along this uh, long section um, that I have uh, indicated to you. And uh, that refers, as I said, not just to restoration aspects as such, but also to the other human uh, land uses in the area. And in 2012, this uh, LIFE project was then even voted as the best in Europe in, in terms of uh, a comprehensive success. This is, uh, the, of course, uh, the result of a lot of uh, discussions, brainstorming among experts and stakeholders, as I said. And you see that the different layers of um, uh, learning and uh, monitoring were then uh, uh, overlaid in order to come up with a joint result. And the field work that is essential is not always happening, of course, in a very sophisticated, but sometimes in a very relaxed way. An example of uh, the new uh, program of measures uh, for this area that has been agreed with the stakeholders uh, and their different interests. And you see that this is um, an improvement of the ecological, so widening of the riverbed, improvement of the flood protection, and then there are also some recreation measures. And in an overview, you see here a long list. You, you cannot recognize, of course, the details, but you see that there's a, a chain of activities which is following up of, on, the, on the work which was done in the past. And that is um, the, 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 the consensus and the findings of uh, the stakeholders who were extremely supportive for the work that was done in the past and who wanted this to be continued. And you see here uh, as the, on the right hand side the, the agreement that the stakeholders have signed as we were hoping uh, at the start of this project. In conclusion, two, uh, two other short examples from uh, the lower part of the Austrian uh, Drava, and you see here on the first slide uh, the situation of one of the big impoundments uh, several years ago, where the, uh, the, the, the crest of the dike was just covered with asphalt, and there were even some car tires protecting the, the banks of this dike, and uh, that was the subject of restoration action that you can see in the sequences and the result is then uh, a, a green bank even though it's an impoundment and that is one of the working principles to do where possible uh, uh, one improvement after the other and that inf uh, refers of course now with a high priority to the restoration of river continuity you see the chain of dams and you see then also the sequence of improvements of the fish passage uh, along each of those dams, starting from the, on the right hand side from the Slovenian border and ending then at that section um, where uh, the ecology is, is still uh, free flowing and under free or more open development than under the control of the dams. In conclusion, there's of course a lot of work still ahead. Uh, the results were very positive for this river, especially in the upper part. Uh, but the, the water management plan is coming up as much as the flood risk management plan. And if I'm well informed, there's right now a presentation in the city of Vienna about this new Austrian flood risk management plan. Continuity improvement and habitat restoration are now moving upstream in the catchment. Hydro peaking and sediment balance are two very important subjects that are currently 
uh, uh, being addressed um, and uh, where solutions are to be found in the near future. The bilateral commission work, of course, is now uh, confronted with some new challenges and will tackle them. There will be new projects, of course, and the stakeholder cooperation, which was uh, really positive um, for uh, many years already, will be continued, and uh, I'm sure that uh, there will be some more positive results about the Trava in the future. Thank you.